right, welcome to Zaslow Show 2.0. It is a Monday, the 1st of May. Good to have you aboard. We are a Blue Wire podcast, always presented by our title sponsor, Anna Jar and Levine Accident Attorneys, 800-747-3, 800-747-3733. You know they're pumped up about the week that we just had. No one supports the South Florida sports teams more than Anna Jar and Levine. If you're involved in any kind of an accident, you call them right after you call 911. Then you get an attorney on the phone immediately when you call Anna Jar and Levine. Accident attorneys, 800 747 free. That's 800 747 3733. Do we have a show for you today? What a week we just had. What a day yesterday. What a night last night. I, you could tell I'm incredibly fired up. You're listening right now. You're super fired up. Make sure you like, you rate, you comment, you do all that fun stuff. We're going to talk to Jessica Blaylock, Bally Sports Florida. She was super charged up last night as the Panthers, they did it. The Panthers pull off the greatest upset in the history of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yesterday, your Miami Heat Go up to New York. The Mecca. The Mecca. The Miami Heat take that ass in the second half yesterday. They dominate the second half against the Knicks. They win game one, 108-101, stealing the home court advantage. We have our NBA rundown, always brought to us by Brunt Insurance, bruntinsurance.com. They're going to have our NBA rundown, full playoff weekend recap coming up. I mean... Last night, so we're, we're going to start with the Panthers here, all right? And, well, actually, I'll tell you real quick about my weekend, all right? I was, I was in Naples the whole weekend. I was in Naples the whole weekend. My son, Weston Select, U14 boys, the, the South Florida Cup and Showcase in Naples this weekend. They had a tournament. They, they, they had a really good showing. Saturday was a lot of fun. Won two really close, great games. We ended up making the championship game Sunday afternoon, and and they lost one nothing. And but my my son's the goalkeeper. My son was fantastic. He was great. The one goal they scored on him yesterday in the championship. It came in the second half. The one goal they scored was it was off a corner kick. Balls getting batted around inside the box. Very difficult. And our team outplayed him. Had goal, three or four golden opportunities, and they just couldn't cash in. So my son knows. Look, you give up just one goal, our team's got to score. We're not winning games without scoring. He knows he played really well. I know he played really well. Super proud of him. Super proud of the boys. It was a really fun weekend. So runner-up in the tournament. They get their little medals, and you know that's one of those. And my son says, I don't want this shit. And he throws it in the trash. We don't do second place. In the Zaslow Mansion. The Zaslow family does not do runner-up. Runner-up medals and runner-up trophies go in the garbage. But overall, very pleased with, with the tournament. We had a lot of fun there in Naples. And, and my son had a, a tremendous save yesterday. I think it was still 0-0. Maybe they were down one nothing. And my son's not tall. Not yet. Like, if he's going to get to the next level with goalkeeping... He needs the growth spurt. It's got to come soon. But he's super athletic, and he's, he's really good in goal. And he had one, one, one shot that he stopped right, you know, top shelf. He managed to slide to it, punch the hand up. So he managed to punch the ball over the net. And, like, his momentum carried him to the back of the net. His cleats got all tangled up in the netting. He was on the ground. It was, it was awesome. He, he kept them in the game yesterday. The boys played really well. Just couldn't finish. So... Is what it is. But as a result, so I'll tell you real quick before we get to the heat. <coughs> I, I saw the first quarter of the heat game yesterday. And I listened to the rest of the game. I, I had the earpiece in during my son's championship game. So I listened to quarters two, three, and four. It was all happening at the same time as my son's game. And sounded great. I mean, I know what happened. Come on. You know, I'm following. I'm following the game. <coughs> But I, I had to listen to the second quarter and the entire second half. But anyway, I mean, I got the gist of it. Come on. 
And and we'll get to the Jimmy Butler. Like, that's the big story is Jimmy Butler is what's going to happen moving forward. What's going to happen tomorrow. We'll, we'll get to that. But the Panthers last night. Let's get into this here before we get to the Heat and before we get Jessica on the show. So, what you know, I love. I love the playoff drama. I love how it makes me feel. It's my drugs. You guys know that. Last night was another level. It really was. Game 7, trying to come back 3-1. On the road, greatest team in regular season history. I was like, it was an out-of-body experience that entire game. I watched the entire game on the edge of my couch, hunched over on the edge of my couch. Sometimes I'm on my knees. Sometimes I'm standing. I'm pleading with the television. And and of course, when they won, uh, well, first of all, so they go up to nothing, which is amazing. But you know, we we have such a long, like 35 minutes left. We were so far from over. And it felt like this the whole series that the Panthers would get the short end of the whistle. And look, the Panthers are a team that take a ton of penalties. They're a super undisciplined team. But some of these calls were bullshit. Like especially the second one on Montour, the roughing on Pasternak, who totally flopped. Not only is it not an embellishment, but they call the bullshit penalty on Montour, and that ends up tying it in two. And now I'm like, all right, like, like we knew the Bruins were going to make a run here. But then in the third, when Pasternak scores off the rebound, and it's like, look, Bobrovsky was good yesterday. But I felt going into the game, and especially when they were down 3-2, I felt he needed to be amazing for them to win. It was going to be a low-scoring game. It really wasn't. And Bobrovsky can't just be good. He needs to be amazing. He was good yesterday. He made some big stops in overtime as well. That's for sure. He was big in overtime. I didn't think the Panthers were going to win that game by outscoring. the. Well, obviously, but I didn't think they were going to win it with their offense. I thought they were going to have to win it with their goaltender. They ended up winning it with their offense and a little bit of the goaltender because he was good. But, time, so time's running out. And it's like, first of all, you get down to like two and a half minutes. And the Panthers have full control in the zone. I couldn't believe they weren't taking Bobrovsky out of the nets. And then we found out after the game. Because like 20 seconds into the control in the Bruins zone, then Bobrovsky's leaving. What the hell were you waiting for? And Paul Maurice said after the game, they had trouble communicating with Bobrovsky. Like, was he not paying attention? So that, that's the only thing that makes sense, how it took so long for Bobrovsky to get out of the net. And then it's like, please, just, just give yourself a chance. Get full control of the puck here. Like, if they score right away on the empty net, oh my God. And you knew this. Like, once it was cut to 2-1, we're up 2-1 going into the third. If the Panthers lose, it's one thing to lose game seven in Boston against that team. But if they were going to lose after having a two-goal lead, and leading going into the second, and leading going into the third, it was going to rip my heart out. It would be devastating if that's how they end up losing. So Bobrovsky finally comes out of the net. And, and we get control. And we find Brandon Montour, who's having some kind of playoff. Game 7, Barkov fires, but Montour scores! Brandon Montour does it! The Panthers have tied the game at 3! With 59 seconds left in Game 7! You gotta love these guys! Brandon Montour with a second of the game. He opened up the scoring in the first period. And this crowd is silent right now as the Panthers working around the perimeter shot then the rebound and it somehow sneaks through again exactly the same position that Montour beat Swayman on the backhand in the first period 
He didn't get to his post and look at the reaction of Reinhardt and Kachuk. They never ever give up. And so I'm watching the game with my son. My, my younger son's watching in his bedroom at this point because it's kind of late. I'm watching downstairs with my older son. And he even said, he's like, Dad, you're going to have a heart attack. I was, I, like, the, the range of emotions from we were dead to now we're back in it. But not only we're we back in it, but now we got to go to overtime. So in overtime, it's either going to be sudden devastation or sudden elation. And, like, so I needed, like, those, the, the 20-minute intermission to just regroup and get my act together because I was oh my like I, I, I was like almost shaking it can't be healthy I almost had a heart attack I really did so Montour saves our life barely squeezes it in top shelf over the right shoulder and we go to overtime and it's not even like okay you know the heat when the heat went to game five overtime you knew they were gonna win not the case at all yesterday I was totally prepared to have my heart ripped out and in overtime there was one shot I think maybe it was Marchand there was one shot where Bobrovsky was beat and the puck hit the top of Bobrovsky's stick and deflected aside so lucky we had the chance there with a breakaway for Kachuk he tried to go five hole save oh that was our chance and not too long after that, Kachuk and Bennett, but keeping the puck alive right on the side and behind the net, making sure the goalie can't freeze the puck, winning the puck, and then Sam Bennett finds Carter Verhage. With Carlo, now Bennett, for Verhage, shoots, he scores! Carter Verhage did it! Let's go home, baby! The Panthers have shocked the world! The biggest upset in NHL history. 4-3 Florida in overtime in Game 7. They'll take another look at that goal. The Panther fans that made the trek. The guys in the Panther jerseys celebrate. The hard work again and to find the guy that can end the series, Carter Verhege. Gets the game-winning goal on this shift that started out of nothing. I couldn't believe it. Like, it happens right in front of us. Great call from Goldie. Like, it happened right in front of us, and I, I couldn't believe it. And for the second straight year, Carter Verhage in overtime, on the road, clinches the series for the Panthers. I couldn't believe it. I'm screaming in the Zaslow Mansion family room. My son from upstairs comes running down out of his room. The three of us, the Zazlo boys, were hugging and jumping around. It was exhilarating. I'm so happy for all the Panther fans. I'm thrilled for the team, obviously. I'm happy for myself. What a night. What a night. All time. Let me give you the national call here. Here's the NHL on TNT. First one to it, Kachuk. Hit by Carlo. Puck pops in the air, lands behind the net, right in the side of the goal. They chop away at it. Kachuk keeping it alive. Carlo can't grab it. It comes to Verhage. Turns, shoots, scores! Carter Verhage! And the Panthers have eliminated the Boston Bruins! An incredible wrist shot. You just mentioned Verhage with that great regular season. Shocked the world. No one picked the Panthers, nor should they have. No one picked the Panthers. And here, here's something I think gets lost a little bit in, in, in what the Panthers did yesterday. And my son made this point to me last night too. Not that I didn't realize it, but he, he saw it. They didn't just beat a record-breaking regular season team. They didn't just win it on the road. It wasn't just an eight beating a one. Which happens in the National Hockey League sometimes. They came back 3-1. It's It wasn't a tight... The Panthers were dead in the water after losing games 3 and 4 at home. They came back against the best regular season team ever down 3-1. Like the main headline is Panthers stun Bruins. 
That's big enough. They came back down 3-1. And for me at least, the expectation changes now. <clears throat> you know, going into last year, going and I was thinking about this all last season because the Panthers were so amazing all year. But going into the playoffs last year, the whole mindset was win the Stanley Cup. Going into the playoffs this year, because of what a lousy regular season we had, going into the playoffs this year, the mindset was, man, uh, like we got a chance to do something special playing the Bruins. All-time great regular season team. Can we hang with them? Can we win a couple games? I really felt even if the Panthers lost last night Game 7, the season would have been validated. Taking the Bruins to Game 7? Down 3-1, forcing Game 7? I really would have thought that that validated the season. But now, they got past the Bruins, who are the best team in the league. <coughs> Excuse me. They got past the Bruins, who are the best team in the league. And now, for me, the expectation changes. Now, let's win the Stanley Cup. Let's win the Stanley Cup. They're not going to face a better team than they just beat. They now know they can play with anyone. They won three out of four in Boston. They came back 3-1. They won game seven. Two wins, both on the road in overtime. They're getting production from all four lines. They're getting good goaltending now from Bobrovsky. Now the expectation, for me at least, and I think it should be like this for the fans too. Now the expect, well, expectation may be the wrong word. But now for me, the feeling is, let's go win the whole damn thing. I can't, I can't, it was, and look, this, this may be a controversial thing to say now, okay? Forever, the greatest moment in the history of this franchise has been Billy Lindsay's goal. Look, I got it right here behind me. See that, that diagram right there? I have it framed. That's the play. Game five against Boston, 1996 first round. First ever series victory for the Panthers. Billy Lindsay with the game winning goal. Schools Raymond Bork. Skates around him. Gets tripped up. Scores anyway under the late call. <coughs> That's always been the number one moment in franchise history. Say that that's lame as hell. That's fine. But... It's true. I mean, it speaks to how lousy the franchise has been, but that's been the greatest moment in the history of the franchise. I had to think about it last night. I'm knocking it down. Billy Lindsay's goal is now number two all-time greatest moment in Panther history. Carter Verhage in overtime, game seven in Boston, all-time greatest regular season team. That goal last night, that moment last night, is now the greatest moment in the history of the Florida Panthers. And it comes one game two days later after the greatest game in Panthers history. That game six on Friday night, holy shit was that bananas. That was the greatest Panther game I've ever seen in my life. Down twice in the third period, they score four straight. They score four in the third. They win seven five. That FLA Live Arena was bananas. That was the greatest Panther game I've ever seen. Followed by the greatest moment in franchise history, the greatest goal in franchise history. Carter Verhage now has the number one spot, greatest moment in Panther history. I can't believe it. I I, I like. Man, <laughs> what a night! What a week! Between the Heat Game 4, Jimmy 56, Game 5, ending Milwaukee, Panthers Game 6, Friday night, Panthers Game 7 last night in overtime. What a week! What a week we just had! Man, we'll get some more, we'll get some more of that with Jessica Blaylock. Alright, let me tell you guys about Sheets and Giggles. 
You know, sheets and giggles, man. You go right now, use the promo code HEAT, you're getting big discount. And I know they got special. Go on to my Twitter account, at Zaslow Show. You can also go to at Sheets Giggles. Go to SheetsGiggles.com, but go to their Twitter account, and you can see they got special going on for Panther Hockey also. You'll use the promo code Big Time Discount. My man Colin, founder and CEO of Sheets and Giggles. I mean, he is so in. He's a Miami guy. He's a South Florida guy. He is so into what the Heat are doing right now. So into what the Panthers are doing right now. Go to SheetsGiggles.com. SheetsGiggles.com slash Zazlo. And use promo code HEAT. You're going to get big discounts all throughout this Miami Heat playoff run. The Zazlo family, we are four of over 100,000 Americans now that are sleeping on Sheets and Giggles. Super environmentally friendly. Naturally softer. Cooler. More breathable. No incesticides. No pesticides. They use less energy. They use less water. I'm talking eucalyptus. Come on now. I have a eucalyptus pillow. I love it. It's my favorite pillow. That comforter. It's my favorite comforter. But the sheets, the bedding, the the fitted sheets, so soft, you're never going to go anywhere else to order sheets after you use Sheets and Giggles. SheetsGiggles.com. SheetsGiggles.com slash Zazlow. All right. So... Let's get to what the Heat did yesterday. I told you, I listened to, I watched the first quarter. I listened to the rest of the game. I had the earpiece in during my son's soccer game. So we all know what the Heat got off to a great start. They're hitting threes. Then they go ice cold. We're down by 12. The fact that we cut it to five at halftime. I don't know about you guys. Like I said, I was listening. You're watching. I felt pretty good about it. (coughs) I felt pretty good. We did not play well, and we're down by just five at halftime. I, I felt fine about it. And before you knew it, we're up by eight now in the third quarter. I told you we would get one of these games. Very confident about it. I always like starting the series on the road. Not that I want to play game seven on the road. I want to win the series before it gets to game seven. But I'm always confident in this. The Heat are always a tough team. They're always mentally tough. They're always physically tough. I'm always confident when the Heat start a series on the road. I always believe they... Because, look, they defend. And if you can defend, defense travels. That gives you a chance to steal a game on the road. I all, I'm always confident when the Heat start a series on the road. I knew they were going to get one of these games. I told you guys that. They did it in Milwaukee, and now they did it in New York. So, the big question mark is, do they wind up playing Jimmy? This is a difficult question. Do you play Jim? Let's say Jimmy's 60%, 50%. You know, if it's a must-win game, even if he's 50%, he's going to get out there in the playoffs. But what if he's only 50%? You already did what you came to New York to do. You stole the home court advantage. You got one. You put yourself in a spot where <coughs> you're probably going to be in a long series now. You, you're, 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 the, you're the underdog, barely, and you already got game one. Do you play Jimmy? Like, I know people are going to say, listen, you can't afford to punt game two. You can't afford to be an eight seed and punt one of these games. Here's the thing. This is not a regular eight seed. Number one, they're really the seven seed. They lost the play-in and then won the next play. They're really a seven seed. Now, the difference between seven seed, eight seed, it's it's negligent. It, it's, it, 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 it's, not, it's not relevant. But this is not a regular eight seed. Don't treat this team like an eight seed. The regular season is long gone. This is clearly not an eight seed. This is not your typical eight seed. So I don't know that I would look at it as they can't afford to punt. I don't want them punting games. But uh, they, they can't afford to give away a game when you're an eight seed. They're not playing the number one. They're playing the number five. And here's the thing. There's so much time between game two and game three. Now, that, it's not like they're resting him. He's He's hurt. To go from Sunday all the way to Saturday and be able to get treatment in between, 
pretty huge. Like, you look at that schedule when it first came out, like, oh, this is bullshit. Now, now you're pretty happy with the schedule. Yeah, now we're pretty happy. And Julius Randle, I think, is probably going to play tomorrow. He's very hurt also. And he was bad in the first round playing hurt. Here's the thing. <coughs> it's, I, I, I think Jimmy sits tomorrow. I think he probably can play. But I think they're going to sit him tomorrow to make sure he's good for the remainder of the series. They already stole the home court advantage. And not that you shouldn't try to get greedy and get both, but it's so hard to get both games on the road to start the series. You, I, I think there's a part of it where you have to be a li you have to try and be realistic. And what I mean by that is, look, Knicks are a good team. And you're saying, hey, we're going to get both games in New York? I know they haven't been a great home team this year, but we're going to get both games against a good team? You see what just happened? The, now, I know Milwaukee's a lot better than New York, but you see what just happened in the first round. Milwaukee, without Giannis, after losing game one, kicked the shit out of the heat in game two. It's so hard to win both games on the road to start the series. So I think there's an element where you got to be realistic. That game two is going to be so hard to win, even when you're healthy. And I think the Heat know that. I think the Heat know they got what they came for. And I, I think we see Jimmy again on Saturday, game three. And I would not blame him if that's the move. I think game two is so hard to win with or without Jimmy. You know you're going to get a big-time desperate effort from the Knicks. <coughs> and we saw it, of course, in, in, this first, in the first series. Bucks are now without Giannis going into game two. The Heat have all the confidence after winning game one. What's going to happen? We got smoked. I think, we, I think we got one. Let's make sure Jimmy is as healthy as can be for the two home games. Because if we're going to win this series, it's not about winning game two. It's about winning both games three and four. That's how you win this series. Is by protecting the home court and winning games three and four, just like the Heat did in the first round against Milwaukee. That's how you win this series. Now, I, you, can always, you can always tweet at me, at Zaslow Show. I love when you guys do that. You can always tweet at me. Getting tweets yesterday. Zaslow, apologize to Kyle Lowry. No, I'm not going to apologize to Kyle Lowry. He was great yesterday. And I'm really happy he was great yesterday. It's not like, I, I, I've told you guys this before. It's not like the Tua haters who, no matter what, still think he stinks. And they want him to fail so they could say they were right. Idiots. That's not like that. I've told you from the get-go, I want to be wrong about Kyle Lowry. I hope I'm wrong about Kyle Lowry. I want him to do well. Why wouldn't I? He didn't do anything to me personally. He didn't seem like a bad guy. But apologize for what? For him being terrible all throughout the year and me not appreciating how terrible he was? Why would I apologize for that? He was terrible. I acknowledged he was terrible. There's nothing to apologize for. I want him to do well. I want to... Now, you know, he had the huge sec, uh, first play-in game. And then we essentially, you know, didn't hear from him in the Milwaukee series. Like, you're getting one good game out of every five out of him. Is what it is. Well, we needed that yesterday. He was great yesterday. I hope we see it again tomorrow. I hope we see it again every game. I don't think that's going to be the case, but uh, apologize. I didn't say anything wrong. And I, I want him to do well. I'm rooting for him to do well. There's nothing to apologize for. And here's also the great thing about this Heat team so far at this playoff. Obviously, Jimmy is the driving force, but they've had different guys step up. Like yesterday, it was Vincent and Lowry who step up in huge ways. The next game, maybe it's Struess and Martin. <coughs> I 
I mean, Martin had the huge fourth quarter game four against Milwaukee. Maybe next game, Struess and Martin give you the big production. Maybe it's Ro Robinson was 0 for 5 yesterday. Okay, get those bricks out of the way. Maybe next game it's Robinson and Love who have the huge games. Bam is steady. Look, Bam had a good game yesterday. Bam is steady. Jimmy's doing his thing. You need a couple of other guys to step up each game. And you got a bunch of guys capable of doing that. And yesterday, it was Vincent and Lowry. They're probably not going to do it again tomorrow. Who's it going to be? Who are going to be the other two guys who do it? I, I can't believe the week that we just had. South Florida, best sports town. Miami Hurricanes, Final Four. FAU, Final Four. Panthers, Heat, both eight seeds. Both knocking off number one seeds. First time in the history of sports that that's happened. Same city, same year. Eight seeds, knock off the teams with the best record. Never happened before. Best sports town. We own you, Boston. Best sports town. And not just that. Heat and Panthers, eight seeds, knock off the one seeds. The year after, Heat and Panthers were both one seeds. Like, really weird. Scheduling's kind of quirky with the Heat and Panthers now, right? <coughs> so, they're both playing tomorrow night. Game two for the Panthers is Thursday in Toronto. Game three for the Heat is not until Saturday. The rest of the Panthers' schedule, I assume, is going to come out later today. It is not out yet. Game three Heat is Saturday. That would essentially line up for game three Panthers to be Saturday also at home. Like, can we get a break? Can we make it alternating days? Like, can Panthers game three be Sunday? Can we get Heat home Saturday, Panthers home Sunday, Heat home Monday, Panthers home Tuesday? Can we get a break? Can, can the NHL help us a little bit with this? Can we enjoy down here in South Florida? We never have our teams playing at the same time like this. Can we get alternating days? Can we enjoy everything? Please, Hashem, I say a quick prayer. Please, Hashem, please make the scheduling gods of the National Hockey League. Please let them have the Panther games alternate days from the Heat games. I love you so much. Okay, thank you. Can we please get that? I'm so fired. I hope all you guys are, ex are just excited as I am. Well, what a great week. So, hey, the weather was bad this week. Was it hailing here in Cooper City? Someone told me it was hailing. Either way, that could cause damage to your home. That could cause a leak in your home. If that's the case, you need to call or text Water Cleanup of Florida immediately. Water Cleanup of Florida, if you have a leak, you don't know where it's coming from, 954-900-8635. My boys, the Greensteins, they have over 60 years combined experience. Their team is going to handle any kind of leak detection issue you have. Water Cleanup of Florida, fully licensed, insured, certified to provide the one-stop shopping that all of us busy homeowners and busy business owners require. You don't need to bring in other contractors. They're going to handle the entire project from start to finish. Serving the entire Tri-County area, Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach County, call or text Water Cleanup of Florida immediately when you notice there could be something wrong. 954 900 8635 954-900-8635 or go to WCUFL.com, Water Cleanup of Florida. We clean up your schmutz.